Welcome to Good Dog Nation, the weekly video podcast that's all about having a good dog. Hosted by Michelle McCarthy, CDBC, CTAC, Leading Therapy Dog Authority, and owner of Canine Homeschooling. And Kim Merritt, co-founder of GoodDogInABox.com, GoodDogPro.com, and founder of The URL Doctor. This episode is brought to you by GoodDogInABox.com, reward-based dog training and dog bite prevention products for families with kids and dogs. And GoodDogPro.com, the online content subscription and community for dog professionals with reward-based dog training products, curriculums, and online courses to educate, motivate, and positively impact those that work with dogs. And CanineHomeschooling.com, remote reward-based dog training, behavior consulting, and therapy dog consulting with Michelle McCarthy. Now, let's join Good Dog Nation. Welcome to Good Dog Nation. I'm here with my co-host, Michelle McCarthy from K9 Homeschooling. Hi, Michelle. Hi. And we are really thrilled to have a, a guest today, Dr. Susan Smythe. She is the director of the Gilhart and Vascular Institute and the chief uh, division of cardiovascular medicine. Susan received her medical degree from the University of North Carolina School of Medicine in Chapel Hill, which is where I am in Chapel Hill, yay. She then completed fellowships at Mount Sinai Medical School, New York and University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Her clinical interests are in heart disease treatment and prevention with a particular focus on disorders of blood clotting, such as uh, such as cause heart attacks, strokes, lungs, and leg clots. And she has a very interesting setup at the Gilhart Institute with therapy dogs. And she and Michelle have had a connection for a long time. So Michelle, I'm going to let you tell us about the very interesting uh, relationship you two have and uh, the therapy dogs that Susan has. Sure. So about five years ago, well, actually six years ago, I had trained a black lab named Bolt for uh, Dr. Erica Erlinson, who was working at Ch um, Cardinal Hill, which is a, a, a division in University of Kentucky Medical Center. And Bolt was working with her. I think he'd been there about a year. And I believe Dr. Smythe saw uh, Dr. Erlinson and, and Bolt in the hospital. And one thing led to another, and they started talking and Bolt made a visit to Dr. Smythe's family, to her home, to kind of get to know everybody. And from there, Dr. Smythe, or Dr. Erlinson said, is it okay if I connect you? Um, Dr. Smythe is interested in therapy dogs and she'd like to talk to you more. I had just started raising a young black lab named Carmine. Um, he, he had joined my family at that point. I was like, well, he might stay with our family. I'm not quite sure you know, what his future is going to hold. I've been raising and training dogs for, for folks for a little while. Um, and it was wrought really maybe three, four weeks into him joining my family that I got a call from Dr. Smythe. <clears throat> and kind of one thing led to another. He was a really wonderful dog and I just loved his temperament. And even though it's impossible to know at you know, four months what a dog is going to do, I felt he really had the potential and the temperament to, to be a therapy dog, if that's what he wanted when he was an adult dog. So we kind of started the adventure at that point of, I'm going to raise him and train him. We'll just keep evaluating him every step of the way and see if, if this is the job that he wants. Um, I knew the most important thing to me was the first conversation I had with Dr. Smythe was that her family loved dogs and that more than anything, they wanted to have a dog join their family and it would be wonderful if he ended up having a job too. So my priority when I raise dogs for other people is that first and foremost, they have to want a dog. They have to really want to have a dog in their family. And if the dog has a job, that's even better. So that's kind of where it started on my end. And then from there, it was really a year long process of preparing all of the staff at UK, uh, Dr. Smythe, you know, really having to kind of put together a program. There was a lot of communication between us. Um, she and her family were Skyping in to training sessions for Carmine. He would come to group classes and they'd Skype in. So they were getting to know him uh, and he had his own Facebook page. I started a page for him because I wanted them to feel that they were having the experience of watching him grow up and getting to know him not just a year later, you know, here, here's your dog. Um, so it was a lot of fun because they got to see what I was seeing 
and Skyping into classes. They got to see him working in class and having fun. So on my end, it was a great experience. And I think on UK, University of Kentucky's end, it was a year long process of getting ready for him. And I'll let Dr. Smythe kind of explain from, from her end, um, you know, how did you first become interested in therapy dogs? Like what was your, what was your reason for thinking, yeah, this is something we'd really like to do at Gilhart? So several years ago, we opened a new um, pavilion of our hospital where the, the heart patients um, are now taken care of. And so patients that are, for example, recovering from uh, heart attacks or having had heart surgery. And as we were designing this new floor, we were incorporating a lot of new therapies that are all aimed to try to accelerate the healing process. And so the entire floor, for example, is designed around the use of art in, in um, healthcare recovery. And we have music therapy. And we got very interested in the concept of pet therapy. There is a lot of good literature around the use of pet therapy in patients with heart conditions. We also, in the design of the floor, looked at things like how we can increase mobility of our patients, get them up walking earlier, and the use of, of dogs um, at, at, you know, as part of our mobility team was something that we were very interested in. And it was around that time that I met Erica and Bolt, and things really took off from there. Yeah, so that was, at, at that point, you know, I was raising Carmine, and I always need to have a lot of information about what the dog's job will be, um, because every therapy dog can have a different job. And I remember in the conversations that we had, one of them was that Carmine was going to be the motivator, hopefully, to get people up and moving. That, um, and Dr. Smythe can share, you know, some of the, the types of patients that are on the unit. Some are there for a very long time. They're very sick. Um, they're not always very motivated to want to get up and move. Um, but it changes everything when a really cute dog shows up at your door and they ask you, would you like to go for a walk with Carmine versus do you want to walk with the physical therapist? Um, so the dog really is a, a great motivator. Um, for patients. So my training with Bolt consisted of obviously a lot of socialization. Um, you know, I wanted him to have a lot of exposure to all kinds of people out in the community. He clearly loved people from when he was a little puppy. Um, he had a wonderful temperament. He was a very easygoing dog. He wasn't a dog that, you know, had any concerns about him developing issues. Um, he was a great pup and he was a great young dog. Um, so we would go out in the community. He trained in class with me. Obviously, he lived with my family, so he was exposed to lots of people. Um, lots of walking. When I knew that his job would encompass walking, he not only had to be a dog who walked well on leash, but he had to be a dog who could adjust the pace of his walk based on who he was walking with. So he had to be comfortable walking very slow and then picking up the pace um, you know, based on who was holding the leash or who was walking with him, that would determine how quickly he'd be walking. And some dogs are not comfortable walking at a snail's pace next to a patient or a person who just walks very slow. But Carmine was. He just had a very, it's a very easygoing personality. Um, so training him was just, you know, I think at one point between our training and I walked him every day. I love to walk the dog. So he probably walked a thousand miles with me in the time that I had him. I had logged it at one point and we just walk and walk and walk and walk. And people would see me out in the street and we would walk and then we'd walk really slow, we walk really fast. And they probably thought, is she sick or something wrong with her? Why is she walking so weird? Um, we'd walk at the mall, we trained at a local hospital. So he would be used to all the things that go on in the hospital from the overhead announcements, uh, elevators, equipment, floor cleaners, vacuums, dropping things on the floor, white jackets, everything. Um, he volunteered in a couple different parts of the hospital. So it was easy for me to see, continuing to train him, just what a great dog he was going to be. And also what a great family member, because he was just such a sweet dog. I just loved him. Um, so 
at one point, I think it was in November, a few months before he was actually going to move, um, his handler is a woman named Caitlin King. She is an exercise physiologist. Um, and Dr. Smythe can explain in a little more detail what her job is at the Gilhart Institute. But she was going to become Carmine's handler. Um, and so she came up here to my home and stayed with us for a few days and was really learning how Carmine learned. Like, how did I train this dog? And how does she, how was she going to work with him? And this is something that a lot of the clients that or that I work with, they commit to this ongoing training of, I can't just hand you a trained dog. He's not a wind up toy and say, here you go, have fun. You have to really understand how he learned and what he knows and what he responds to so that you can be an effective team. And at a great time with Caitlin, she was very excited to meet him. And then she was able to go back to Gilhart and start prepping all the other staff that would have interaction with Carmine. So it was one of the, the best, and I say this, I've shared this with Kim on many occasions, that that experience was, and today still is the best example of having a dog work in your facility. A lot of people try it. A lot of people do it. They don't necessarily do it well. They don't do it in the best interest of the dog, and they don't do it in the best interest of the patients and the staff. But Dr. Smythe and her team have made sure that this is a very well-organized, well-run program that covers everybody's needs, not just, oh, I brought my dog to work, and now we'll see what happens. Um, so I'll let Dr. Smythe kind of share during that, that year of waiting for Carmine, which I'm guessing was a little hard because here I have him and, and he's, you know, everybody's waiting for him to come, um, which is why I started the Facebook page so they could at least see kind of in real time, okay, this is what our dog is doing. But I know there was a lot of prep on your end to get ready for him. There certainly was a lot of excitement, both at work, but also at home as we were waiting for Carmine. We have two boys who were um, early teens at the time and were just thrilled about the possibility of, of having Carmine come to be our dog. We um, did do a lot of prep work in the hospital. So as Michelle mentioned, we identified somebody that is Carmine's handler still today. Um, Caitlin has the whole entire time been his handler at work. She's an exercise physiologist. She's part of our cardiac rehabilitation program. And so she works with patients that are in the hospital, getting them prepared to go home. Um, beginning the rehab, what we call the phase one rehab process, uh, making the transition to home and to often to cardiac rehab that continues after after discharge from the hospital. And as an exercise physiologist, as somebody that is very familiar with things like mobility, she has an interest in, in animals herself and was very keen to be Carmine's handler. So she works with Carmine three times a week. She actually helped us write all of the policies for the, for the Gil Hart and Vascular Institute for our pet therapy program. She took what was at the time existing in the hospital, which really was pretty limited material and worked with best practices that Michelle and others provided to her really to put together a framework for how we were going to have therapy dogs in the Heart Institute in a safe and effective manner. And that really did require a fair amount of work on her part. So our, but Carmine and uh, Sayla are the only two therapy dogs in your hospital or are there? No, there, there are now others. There are a, a number of, of therapy dogs in, in the hospital. At the time, at the time we had no, what we would, what, what we call uh, Carmine and Taylor are unit specific dogs. And so, as I said, Carmine is specific for the, the Heart and Vascular Institute. Now he will visit other places, but, but his primary role is with, with heart patients. Sayla's primary role is with stroke patients. There are other dogs that come and visit patients across the hospital. It's at our hospital, it started actually in the children's hospital. And, and now we have a number of, of uh, dogs that, that visit in different places in the hospital. And, and just to clarify, 
Carmine and Sayla live with you. They are your personal family dogs. And then you take them to work. And at work, they have a separate handler that actually works with them and the patient. That is correct. So there, there are dogs. They are for the most of their life, regular dogs that do regular dog things. Um, three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they, my husband uh, brings them into work. He has a very set routine that he does with them. They walk around the, the campus and then they come into my office and we actually have multiple people that keep an eye on them. And so they, we have several of our staff in the office that are available to, to, to take care of them. They each have handlers that, that take them up to visit with the patients. As I said, um, Caitlin, who's been Carmine's handler from the beginning, Sayla's actually had a couple of different handlers. And so we've had to go through some transitions there. She, uh, as I mentioned, works with stroke patients and has a slightly different role. Carmine really focuses on walking with our, our patients and getting them up and moving. Sayla works on gross motor movement with stroke patients. And so she'll climb onto their bed and let them petter, um, the brush, um, you know, being able to, to manipulate a brush is, is a, a skill that stroke patients can start to work on in the hospital. Um, she'll bounce balls with the patients. Again, those type of, of gross motor movements that a stroke patient very often needs to relearn how to do. And then, you know, as I mentioned, when they're, they, they typically um, work for several hours in the morning, it's pretty exhausting work for them. And then there are folks in the office that keep an eye on them, you know, while my husband and I are, are busy working. And so there's really a team of people around the dogs. It, it, um, it's frankly not something that my husband and I could do on our own. We, we have full-time jobs and, and have multiple people who also have full-time jobs. And so it's a combination of a lot of different people working with the dogs. So I'm curious what kind of training the handlers went through versus your other staff in knowing how to deal with the dogs when they arrived. And and, and now. yeah, so absolutely. And so they have all worked uh, remotely or in person with Michelle. So Caitlin actually went and spent time with Michelle to to work on certain skills with Carmine. The handlers are all certified with the dogs. And so they they and that requires that they've worked with the dogs and they've trained with the dogs. And so it's a fairly we go through interviews with with the the handlers as well. And so it's a fairly rigorous process that that they've had to go through. And, and then they have to pass a test that they can be a certified handler. And, and what kind of certification is that? Who is that through? So the testing, the actual therapy dog testing for their handlers is through Alliance of Therapy Dogs. So it's a, it's a very rigorous test. It's not something where, oh, you just, can your dog sit and walk with you on a leash? They're really being observed as a team, interacting with patients, being in the facility. How is the dog, what is their comfort level? How is the dog responding to what's being asked of them? Because again, we don't want to put a dog in a job they're not suited for. It's, right. it's bad for everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously the dogs, both Carmen and Sayla, lived down in Kentucky and were working for a year minimum before they were tested. So they had to really get to know their job, get to know the handlers, the new routine, and then they went through the formal testing process, which is really required for liability purposes. You know, the teams need to be tested, they need to be certified handlers, they need to have the insurance that comes with that. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's just, it's a long process. And I don't know that a lot of people realize how much preparation goes into it, how much training, coordination of staff, developing the, the dog's job description. And I think those job descriptions can just keep evolving. Sayla is, at least when she was with me, she was a different temperament than Carmine. She's, she's a little spunkier. Um, <laughs> I always would joke if you would, you know, get Carmine to do an interactive game, he would just kind of, you know, kind of look at you like, oh, that looks like a lot of fun. Why don't you go get that ball? Um, 
But Sayla is just, she's just got this spunk and she was a very interactive dog. And I could tell when I was raising her, I could really see her doing, uh, participating in physical therapy and participating in specific skill training because that's just her temperament. She's just this fun loving little dog. Um, Carmine, he just has that slow, steady, consistent temperament, which is also critical for a therapy dog. So they have very important jobs. They have different jobs and they have the temperament to match their job. So dogs are successful when we give them a job that they're good at, just like people. Um, so what I loved about them and even seeing them, you know, a couple of years later is that they're still really the same dogs that I raised. They're just the sweetest, kindest dogs. Um, and it's a lot of fun to see what they're doing now. They have great jobs. They certainly have very different personalities and their, their personalities really do match what they do at work. Um, Carmine yeah. is a phenomenal leash walker and in fact, will walk off leash right next to you. He, as Michelle said, he will pace to whatever um, speed a, an individual is walking at. Whereas Sayla wants to please. And so she is very eager to interact with people and, um, yeah. it, you know, she's very much a people pleaser and, and, uh, so I, I think the jobs that they have really do suit what their skills and their personalities are. Folks at work are always surprised when they see video or pictures of Carmine doing things like swimming in a pool or running around the backyard because he is so <laughs> laid back at work. And so it, uh, and, and they're, they're go on, go on. Yeah, they're very different. And I think that, you know, that's the most important part mm -hmm. of having these dogs who have these big jobs is they have to also be allowed to be dogs and they come home on their days off. So what do Carmen and Sailor do on their days off? They just hang out at the house and, and play together. One of the reasons that we really were keen to get a second dog was so that Carmine had somebody at home to, to interact with and play with. We had typically had two dogs in the past and so, and, and, you know, the dogs being able to just run around in the backyard and, and play, we thought, you know, it's a, it, it, it's very stressful for them to be at work. And, you know, those days off are very important. And so they are dogs on their days off. They play together. They play with the boys. Uh, they swim in the pool. We go for long walks around the neighborhood. And Sayla has her same exuberance in the pool, doesn't she? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> She, the first time she saw our pool, she dived right in. Carmine was a, Carmine sits on Car, the steps. Carmine was a, a little more leery, although now he loves to swim. He was a little more leery going in the first time. She just, I mean, literally dove into the pool <laughs> and uh, kind of hasn't stopped. Susan, since I'm, I'm, I'm curious what the feedback has been for your hospital to have a program like this and what what it's like from the patient side to be in the hospital and, and there be therapy dogs. A absolutely. I think it's been transformative. And so uh, both for our patients, but also for the staff. And so I, I like to share something that really touched me and was actually somewhat surprising to me. I had one patient who told me that that Carmine's visits had been so very important to them as they were going through the, the situations that they were going through in the recovery process in the hospital. And that when Carmine came into the room for the first time, they realized that they couldn't be as bad off as they thought that they were if a dog, something as normal as a dog could walk into their room. Yeah. And that to, for them, it made them feel really hopeful that that things couldn't be so bad because here was this black lab that was able to come in to see them. Yeah. I, I should explain that our the the our hospital is a very high acuity hospital. So we take care of patients that really can't be managed at other hospitals in not just our state but the region of the country that we're in. And so we have patients that are on things like ECMO, which is 
extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. That's what ECMO stands for. It's the machine that literally takes blood um, out of people's body. It oxygenates the blood and pumps it back in. And we have people that walk in our on our floor on ECMO. It's sort wow. of the highest level of support that's possible when your heart and your lungs are, are no longer working. Carmine walks with patients on ECMO. And so, you know, for a dog that's very sensitive to smell, I mean, I think all, most dogs are, are ours are, are yeah. very smell sensitive. There is an overwhelming smell of blood on our floor Be, because I mean, people are, are living on these machines that are circulating their blood outside their body. And it took Carmine a long time to get used to that and to get to the point where he could walk with these patients, but he now routinely does that. And, uh, you know, again, I think the, the benefit for the patients has been absolutely enormous. We've had patients that literally were in the, the hospital for months, not being able to get out of bed. And we encouraged them first to sit and that if they could sit, Carmine would come and sit next to them and eventually got those folks to the point where they were walking with Carmine. And, you know, you, there's no words that can express <laughs> wow. that. No, there isn't. I'm, I, my father had valve replacement surgery twice, and I know the type of, he, he was not as bad off as what you're talking about, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a, a, a level of care and a recovery process that is extreme. And I can imagine to have a dog there bring some sense of normalcy back mm -hmm. and really just yeah. makes you feel yeah. good. So Kim, I'm going to attempt to play a video that was have a new member of our team and that new member of our team is Carmine and he is our pet therapy dog. Um, Carmine is a wonderful addition to the team especially with all of our patients that have been here for a long time. It gives them something to look forward to that isn't medical, it isn't hospital walls, it's not even medical personnel. So he gives an emotional support to all these patients and we can use him as a motivating factor. There was a patient that had been here for approximately four months, and so we had been visiting with her on and off. We'd walk with her multiple times, um, but she said that she had two little wiener dogs at home that were waiting on her, and that she loved Carmine so much, and that he was her motivation to get home to her little puppies. I actually just brought him into my patient's room. She's seemed a little bit depressed today, so I thought it would be a good idea for him to come say hi. And she has a dog at home of her own, so we got him up to the chair and she was able to pet him and he gave her a nice wet kiss on her hand and it made her smile. We have had patients that have been in the bed for months that have felt that they were too weak to get up out of bed. And Carmine has come in and worked with them and gotten them not only out of the bed, but gotten them to walk. And then even from walking, Carmine has spent several extended periods of time with these patients now off the floor down for example in our lovely gardens outside the cafeteria and so he's been able to help those patients go from literally being bed bound to being able to enjoy a meal outside in the sun. So he does all of these wonderful things at home that he, that he does here at work for all of us. I think that it's wonderful for all of us to, to remember that there is incredible power of healing in animals That pretty much says it all right there. That's okay. Really, really. That's such a, such a unique. Um, do we have any, are, are there any statistics or do you have any information as to how many other hospitals in the U.S. have a program like this or anything close to it? I, I don't. I don't know, Michelle, if you, if you do. So how many hospitals in the United States are able to walk patients on ECMO the way you have a special cert. You have to go through special. We, we do, we do, and we were really at the forefront of of some of that with uh, some 
with some surgeons that uh, really promoted this. It, it actually took our nurses well over a year to become comfortable with that process, let alone then inserting a therapy dog <laughs> into the team. <laughs> and so there, there are fairly few hospitals in the United States that perform, that, that offer ECMO, let alone that, that ambulate their patients on it. And so I'm not sure there's another therapy dog in the, in the world that walks with ECMO patients. That, that would be something I could actually look into. Yeah. Very well, in my, in my research, you know, I know that there are therapy dogs who've been involved in different cardiovascular studies and, and I'm sure they visit lots of different areas of hospitals, but I've not heard of a single dog, a therapy dog that walks with patients on ECMO. Cause when you think about, just the team of people required to do that. So the dog has to acclimate to his job and then the, all the distractions, as you mentioned, the smells, then he's got the noise of any equipment involved. And then you have multiple people. So it isn't just Carmine and the patient and the handler, it's probably lots of other people involved. So it's a very distracting environment to put a dog in and expect them to be comfortable. Um, so I think it's not something that a lot of places take on because it requires a, a lot of coordination. Dr. Smythe, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I've, the information that's been shared, I think, is so valuable to uh, not only other dog professionals, but for anybody who's thinking about a dog in the workplace program. And, uh, you know, thank you, ladies, for you. Uh, for sharing. I absolutely. I have to say, I feel like we, we talked a lot about, can I get Stella to come over and maybe we can get her the, sure. the video over? Here she comes. Stella, come on, come on, Stella. Can you come over and say hello? Come, Hi, Stella. Stella. Girl. Oh, there they are. And how old are these dogs now? So Carmine will, he'll be five in December. Carmine will be five. Car Carmine will be five. And, and Sale will be, Sale was about a little yeah, so over So she three. turned three in April. About three and a half. So yeah. they were roughly like two years apart in age. There she is. Aw. <laughs> That's awesome. What a beautiful yeah, dog. Yeah, they are. They really are very sweet puppies. Good girl. Well, right. again, thank you so much. And thank you, Sayla, for saying Good hello job, real Sayla. quick at the end. And uh, please join us again next Bye, week. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thanks Take for having care. me. If you'd like to participate in the rest of today's conversation for professionals who work with dogs and receive continuing education credits from participating organizations for listening, visit gooddogpro.com and subscribe today. Use coupon PODCAST to get 40% off your first month or annual subscription.